here is the some basic definition that we are going to use it in the multi-factor experiments. So I thought it's good that I would share it with you here. Look at here. I have two factors, like I have temperature and the purity, for example. And these factors, each of them, they have two different levels. Like for example, if factor A is temperature, my temperature has low amount and the high amount, right? And then I have factor, um, don't worry about these numbers that you see here. I'm gonna talk about them quickly. But let's say the temperature, I have low, like let's say 30 degrees centigrade and high temperature, as like 60 degrees centigrade. So that's the two levels that I have for my factor A. And then I have factor B, and my factor A will be, let's say it's purity of, let's say methanol. And then for this purity, I would say I have low level of the purity and the high level. So let's say the low is like, when I have like 70% and the um, high is when I have like 85%. So these are like, I would say that the low, I'm, I'm going to show it by the negative um, and the high, I'm going to show it that it's in fact minus one and plus one, but we're going to talk about that later. When we are doing the coding, this negative and positive is going to help us a lot. Then we are going to do the R experiments. Like for example, when I'm looking at this point, it's like that we would say, if I, if my, if I run my experiment at the low level of the temperature, and the low level of factor B was purity, right? Low level of the purity, the value, the result that I got is 20. Like I'm looking for something, I'm, I'm measuring something. So that measurement, like the data points that I'm looking is 20. If I run my, my experiments in the high level of the temperature, and then the low level of the um, factor B, like purity, the measurement was 40. So when we have, if I ask you in your quiz or later that what this 52 represent, what's the operating condition of this 52, you would say that this 52 is the result of the like, of if, if it, it's our observation, when I have the like high level of the temperature, like my temperature, the level that I'm doing the experiments for that temperature is on the high level and for the like factor B if it's purity, whatever the factor B is. That one is the high level as well. So that's the, so I, I read the value of them like this, like the, these 40, 52, 30, and 20 is the response of my experiments. It's the output of my experiments. It's the data points that I would get, uh, I would read it from my experiment, but after you designed your experiments on that specific levels. Here is another way, like you could have your response and here is the like factor N, um, another way of showing that. So, I have the factor A here as negative and positive, like means the low level and high level. And then I can have my response, like for example, here, this being negative, it means that at this point, which is 20, right? I have negative, I have low level um, for factor B and low level for the factor A. And the response is 20. So here the response is that I have like, be positive is like that my experiment i designed the experiment to i set the data points in a way that like only like factor a and b that my factor a is in the low level right and my factor b is on the high level and then i read it i would see that the response is 30 so it's the same 30 that you see here when we are working with all of these um experiments and when I do the calculations, most of the time you will see pay, pay, uh, some figure like this, that we have low and this is just two factors. I'm gonna answer to this question that I'm telling you right now um, later today, like on these lectures. Um, but think about it, if, I, if we had three factors or if we had four factors, what would, we do? what would it be look like? Because right now you can see it's two dimension, factor A and factor B. We added response at number here, right? And um, think about it, what's gonna happen if I had like three factors, if I had four factors, if I had like five or six factors. Um, and we're gonna later, so the shape is gonna change. Also, we would need to define something new like nested factors, but with nested design, so we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so here is the definition of a factor effect. Effect is as I said, it's super important. It's like whenever we want to find out the betas later for our like 
um, each of these variables or for their interactions. So we would, the first thing that you need to do is that you need to understand what's the meaning of these effects, are, like when we say effect. So the change in the mean response, when the factor is changed from low to high, we call it effect. For example, we have main effects and we have interaction effects. The main effect, let's look at here. Okay, so the main effect of factor A. So we are talking about factor A. It means that whatever mean value that we have in the, um, we said that the change in the mean response when the factor is changed from low to high, right? So it's like that whenever you have A, the positive ones, minus the A, the negative one, but the mean value of the response. Like for example, the positive one, when we have the, um, so A is on high, right? The positive one is 40 and 52. The response is 40 and 52. We can look at it here as well. Like this is the positive side. So whatever value that you have 40 and then this one is 52. So 40 plus, or look at it here, both, both of these, it's gonna give us the answer, both of these figures. 50, uh, 40 plus 52 divided by two, we said that they, they mean, right? The average between them. And then minus the negative one, like when our factor is on the low level. So here is 20 plus 30 divided by two. So it's gonna be like, for example, 21. So the main effect of factor A is gonna be 21. It's very interesting. Do you remember that how hard, not hard, but it was time consuming the way that we would do the regression and we find out the like beta no, beta one, beta two, right? We would get the sum of the square on those ones. You will see that here, simply from this 21, we, we can find out the coefficient of the, um, like for example, factor A, if I call it X, um, the coefficient that I have for X in my regression model, simply with this 21, we can find it. I'm gonna talk about it quickly. So this is the effect, main effect of factor A. The main effect of factor B is like that, I would say, okay, so whatever I have like for the positive, this is factor B, right? High is gonna 30 and 52, right? And the mean of it, the average of it, minus, and then whatever I have in the low level of factor B, 20 plus 40 divided by two, which is gonna be on the low level. And then we, we get the difference between them, um, it's 11. So we find out the main effect of factor B, and then the next one is the interaction effect of factor A and B. So for the interaction of them, we would say that, okay, for the, like, when we have the both A and B in the low and both A and B in the high level and get the difference uh, between them, like you would put the, because you wanna see the, what's happening between the, the, on the mean response from the low to the high. So look at here, this is the high one. So A and B, both of them, they're on the high. So this is A high, B high is gonna be 52, right? And then you would have it like, look at this diameter, and then you would have A and B, both of them are on the low, so which is the 21, right? And, and then you would add them divided by two, minus, then you would get the response when they are not the same. Like one of them is high, the other one is low. So you would say that this low plus this high, which is 40, and then this low, when I say plus, I mean that the high, we are on the high level and or we have the factor B on the high level and factor A on the low level, which is 30, so you would add them divided by two. So you're gonna look at the diagonal, you can look at the diagonal as well. So that's gonna be the interaction. So for the interaction effect of the A and B, as I said, is like you would say that, okay, I have the, look at the times that both of them, they're on the positive side or both of them, they're on the negative side because when you multiply them, um, it's gonna be positive, right? But it's like that the effect is gonna be the positive, get the mean of it, and then divide it for the time that the effect, like the interaction of them is gonna be negative, um, which is like that one of them is positive, the other one is negative, and to multiply them, the interaction is gonna be negative. So in that case, you're gonna get the, the interaction effect of factor um, A and B, which here we found it one. So it's gonna give us, and from this one, we can find out the beta uh, for as a coefficient in our regression model for the A and B. So here, that was one example. And uh, look at this, I have um, in this one, I have like factor A, factor B, 
Um, but the response value that I have is 20, 50, 12, 40. So again, A here, I wrote down A, so it's like that the effect of A, the main effect of A is going to be 50 plus 12 divided by 2 is the high one, right? And then when it's low, it's going to be 20 plus 40 divided by 2, get the, like what's going to be the difference between them. So the main effect of factor A is 1. And then here I have like B, uh, they're going to do the same things for B, and then um, it's like that 40 plus 12 divided by 2, 20 plus 50 divided by 2, and then see that what's the difference between them, it's minus 9. And then we are looking at the interaction, um, we want to get the interaction, you would say, okay, for the times that their interaction is, it's like that you set the interaction on the high level, means that when you multiply them, the sign is going to be positive. So it's going to be 12. And then the sign of the negative, negative, when you multiply it, it's going to be positive again, right? And then 20, so it's on the interaction. The interaction level is high. And you would um, get the average of it. And then 40 plus 50 and get the average, of it, which is minus 29. So when we compare them, so these two examples, and um, you can... I would suggest that you pause the video here and try to compare these two um, examples that we had and see that what's the main difference between them and then come back and listen to the rest of the, like watch the rest of the video for here. So when we have, in the previous one on slide number seven, you can see that the interaction, the effect of interaction was very small. Like they wouldn't have, it means that A and B, they wouldn't have that much interaction with each other. So when they don't have that much interaction, it means that we can see that when we are looking at these two lines, these two lines are going to be parallel. There is no interaction between them, right? And you can see it's very small. But when we are looking, when the interaction, it's like here is 29, it's the huge number. When the interaction is like, when we have the case of the interaction, it's going to be, you can see that they have like intercept and they're not parallel anymore. So that's the main difference between these two cases. So we have a case that the main effect is large and comparing to the main effect, the interaction is very small. And we have a case here when the main effects are comparing to the main effect, the interaction is a large number. Um, and you can see that we have the interaction like this. Okay, so now let's um, look at the beta null, beta one and beta one two. Beta 1, 2 means the interaction effect of A and B, like interaction of the A and B whatever it is. It's like that when you look at the regression model is beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 1 2 x1 x2 that we have plus some epsilon that we would have. So the least square feet for this one is like that for, um, I'm going to talk about beta 1 and beta 2 and then I would go to beta 0. For beta 1, Whatever you found as a main effect of A, just divide it by two. So you remember, um, and these are associated with the response surface method um, that we would use it like in optimization and those ones. But it's like, we would say it's a regression model. It's the same regression model that we had, um, but we would say it's a regression model that is associated with, with the response surface uh, method. So we are working with the surface that it's gonna make for us. So whatever effect that you had for A divided by 2, and then whatever effect um, of B, you would divide it by 2 as well. So it's going to give you the beta 1 and beta 2. And then for beta 1, 2, so the interaction effect that you had, you would, um, the interaction effect of A and B, you would divide it by 2, like the, um, we have main effect and interaction effect. We just divide it by 2 here, by 2, that you would find out the um, beta. So when we go think about it here, we have like two factors and each factor has just two levels. So this one is going to work that it would divide it by two. Later, I'm going to tell you more equations that how can we work with it when we have more than two factors or more than two levels for finding out the betas. And then beta null, what are we going to do? Look at here, it's like whatever you had, like 20, 30, 40, 52, and you would divide it by four. Like there were four of them, right? And you will find out the um, beta no. And this one is for the, let me see, it's for the first 
Yeah, this one is for the first example, like this on slide number seven. Look at here, this is for it. So it's by, when we had like the 21 divided by two, it's gonna give me the beta for A and then for X1. And then I have 11 divided by two, it's gonna give me the beta related to the variable number, like mm, the second variable, which is like X2. And then one divided by two is gonna give me the mm, coefficient of the X1 times X2. And then look at here, 30, 52, 20, 40. So here's that we add all of them, all of those response divided by four, and it's gonna give us the beta mode. Then you wanna look at it on the, um, so we had like the two dimensional of it, right? If you wanna look at the three dimension, when we have the uh, model, the regression model, um, this previous page, it was when we wanted to find out the effect, but here is the regression model. With the regression model, you can see that it's x1, x2, and x1 times x2. So you can see here what's going to be the, like, what our um, response surface is going to look like. Um, so this is the estimated um, response surface that we would have. And then we can have it as a counterplot as well. So in the assignments, if you have been asked to draw these res uh, response surfaces or the counterplots of them, you can use any stats or non-stats software. Uh, whatever, like if you wanna use uh, MATLAB to draw it, that's fine. So whatever you are more comfortable with it, you can use it uh, and draw that. So there is no um, like specific software that I want you to work with that. Okay. So now so let's make an assumption. Let's make um, here the response like the interaction, it was 0 0.5 x1, x2, right? So we didn't have that much interaction. It's very small comparing to the, like when you compare it with the 10.5 and 5.5. So we would say that let's remove this because it's, the interaction is not that much big. And then when we want to draw it, you can see that we have a, like a surface which has x1 and x2. Now let's just make an assumption. And let's say we had a case and the response, like the, we wanted to have the response surface um, we wanted to draw the response surface and the interaction was like eight. In that case, we would say the interaction is actually a form of curvature. And when you look at it, you can see that here, what's gonna be the effect of it. Like so far, if, if I had something like, like this, right? If I had something, let's say like this, um, like this, right? as my response surface, then I have the interaction, I would have it like, let's say, like, I would have it something like this, like it's, you would see the curvature and, and then we have the interaction. And when we are looking at the counter plot, it's gonna show it like better, like I have X1 and X2, and then I have these response, the value of the response for it. Um, like as the other points that we would have. Okay, so the next one is an example. Um, and uh, we want to work with 